look outside first thing and it wasn't looking much like an outdoors day which as it turned out I was pretty happy it seemed to start off as normal bit of brekkie bit of chat and then as things brightened up a decision with Steve at classic cycling tours as where to head off to and we decided on the cold Tammy. Still in the Auvergne Rhone Alps region, we would head out from Moutier through the valley, heading towards Albertville, which was getting prepped for the start of a tour stage in the coming week. And then from Albertville, we would ascend the Col de Tammy over the other side and descend into Vavage, loop round back through the valley and head back towards Albertville. Not the longest ride, but in the end, it worked out fine. Now by this time, I don't know what it was, but it was either I had scrambled eggs, not poached eggs for breakfast, or the ridiculous Rafa bib shorts that I was wearing with a really high waist, which must have been designed for Simon Cowell, but I was not feeling good at this point. Definitely not happy with these Rafa crawl cool bibs. They just aren't for me. They'll be going straight on eBay when I get back. Well after I picked out the few stray pubes. Rolling out, heading towards Albertville, battling through it. Through a few little towns, still some nice scenery around and we'd soon be in the valley. Overcast day, keeping the temperatures down. Soon we found ourselves at the start of the colder Tammy. Now it's not the tallest. It has been featured a number of times on the tour though. Uh, it used to be classified as a third cat climb, but then back I think in 1999 they changed it to a cat too. Last time the tour came over the top was in 2013. Now this route from Albertville is just over 9k long, average gradient of 6% and it peaks out at just over 900 meters above sea level. Great work, guys. Breathing in, breathing in. Keep it going. We are going. Suit into it. Pretty much half the way up. Quick photo from Steve there. Now, somewhere along the climb up, there is an old fort and a monastery, which we did not see, but honestly, I could have done with some healing. Great views, though, still. Almost. Reasonable bit of traffic that will come over here, as I guess it's a, a thoroughfare. But still, not too busy. Up and up and up. I guess I was fortunate those clouds kept the temperatures down a little bit, but it was still a nice day. The rain had pushed away. Are we nearly there yet? Absolutely. Are we nearly there yet? Are we nearly there yet? <laughs> what have we got here? Yes, 1k to go. Not far. Now, as the climb is pretty good. I mean, it pretty much averages while you're in the middle chunk, only around five sixes, maybe a few sevens. There is a little bit between 7.5 and 8k, which is a ramps up to 9%. But then once there, you're through to 4% for the last k or so. Not quite Just around the corner, here's our welcoming party. Yeah, to take a start feature of the sign. And here's another little sign saying we have a rebate at the top. A rebate. And then we're on to the descent. 
down into Fabergé. Now, I guess it's not your, maybe what you would call picturesque descent. Certainly not what we encountered the day before on the Madeleine. It just seemed like a bit of rolling countryside. Pretty easy going. No real sharp twists or turns. Just a few gentle rolling bends. I guess maybe due to the nature of the coal. Maybe a little bit more pedaling than uh, we've been used to. But it was still a fun descent. Probably a good option for a warm up. Maybe we should have done them the other way around. And this should have been on the first day. But it was still good fun. Clouds were moving away, sun was coming through. Quick recap on how we got here. We flew into Geneva. Unfortunately, we flew with British Airways and hence we're still a man down because day two, still no bite box and bits from BA being delivered. They didn't care. Everything else was pretty much done for us by Steve and Anna at Classic Cycling Tours. Quite a bit. And it was definitely a big bonus to have Steve on board, especially with the start of the day where we were still caning it down with rain. I wasn't feeling the best. He had some expert local knowledge and we could quickly change our plans and find something that would suit. And this definitely did suit for day two. By this time I'd recovered, I was actually feeling all right. So I'd almost taken a pair of scissors out on the bib shorts. I didn't quite go that terminal though. Still some nice views as we come down here.
pretty gentle descent, some nice flowing curves, and maybe a good choice if you just want to break yourself into a bit of descending. Don't go for anything too epic. This is a good choice. Still got a good bit of speed up. section or the lower section gets a little more interesting into a few little villages some nice curving bends for the civilization find the cars a 30 kilometre zone, slow down a bit, hop over the bumps.
hang on with his left hander. Now, I'm pretty sure that's not me registering 37 in a 30. I think that's someone behind me, so I think we're good. And there we are. Down into Babage. We pick Steve up here. And then we start rolling back. Heading, looping round back towards Albertville. Here is where we pick up this really nice cycle path. So we're off the town road, away from the traffic. We jump on the local cycle path, which actually was really good. Not too busy. Get your toe down. No cars. Minimal pedestrians. And nice bit of scenery still. Watch out for a few crossings, make sure you don't get run over, but we're good, back on it. Quick check in with Steve.
Boss UK back in the Rubberville, we pick up the river. Day out. Had a bit of a shaky start, but turned out right in the end. Uh, I was pretty happy though to get off in Albertville. over 70 kilometers almost three hours and we did about 821 meters elevation all that was left to do was a little bit of planning later that evening for the next day and it would be a day that I've been dreaming about for years and years 